время мы начнем через минуту. Hello everyone, my name is Tanya and I'm travel curious tour guide in Moscow. We will start in a few minutes and we hope you enjoyed a great Soviet song called The Best City in the World, which is about Moscow. The song is devoted to Moscow. Uh, we will give a few more minutes for other travelers to join us. And you can see beautiful views. We are on another square. Manezhnaya. As you can see, we love squares. So, I hope uh, everybody who wanted to join us is already with us. Uh, we will have a walk in uh, the heart of Moscow, Red Square, which is not only the heart of Moscow, but also the heart of Russia, the musty place. It was a trading, political and religious center of Russia. We will see amazing, stunning buildings such as St. Basil's Cathedral, Lenin's Mausoleum, the Historical Museum, Goom Department Store. We will talk about Russian culture, Russian history. And if you have any other questions about Russia or Moscow, feel free to ask me. Uh, I've been working as a tour guide for over five years and I'm really thrilled that today I can show you Moscow no matter where you are right now in London or in New York uh, today I'm with my great colleague who is behind the camera uh, her name is Alina and she's a very experienced tour guide so if you have any questions today you're lucky because there are two tour guides who will be able to answer them and we will start with the zero kilometer. The zero kilometer, it means that it's the place that where you can see the distance to any other city. For instance, if you want to know how far you are from London or from New York, you come here. But you can also see there is something happening behind me. Well, people flip a coin behind the shoulder to make a wish. Let's uh, try to do that. busy right now a lot of tourists so actually there is a lot of tourists right now and many most of the tourists they are from uh, Russia and you will see that Red Square is a pretty busy place so despite the fact that I wasn't able to feed the coin I hope we will get lucky and you will have an amazing experience with us I believe that you already joined some great tours with travel curious so I would like to ask you, how old do you think are the gates to Red Square? The resurrection gates, main entrance to Red Square. Do you have any ideas? Often tourists say that 16th century, 18th century, but that was a tricky question, believe it or not, but they were built 25 years ago. Yes. What you can see right now, it's a modern replica of the resurrection gates that were built in the 16th century. And traditionally, that was the main entrance to Red Square. That was also the entrance for Nicholas II, the Russian Tsar, the last Russian Tsar during his coronation. So what's happened? You know that when Soviets came into power, they completely changed not only our history but also our culture they changed the city so in the 30s it was decided to demolish the resurrection gates and then and then only after the collapse of the soviet union they were rebuilt we have an expression in moscow that everything changes in 20 years but nothing in 200 years 
that could be a good example for it. We will go towards uh, Red Square and you can see that there is also Iversky Chapel, very beautiful green iron chapel. It was built in the 18th century and that's one of the biggest architectural changes uh, with the Red Square, uh, with the Resurrection Gates. But one more time, that's a replica. It was also rebuilt after the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 90s. It's pretty small, by the way. It looks uh, small, but it's often crowded inside. Uh, the iron icon was one of the most respectful icons uh, in Moscow. And while we are going to Red Square, I have a question for you. Why do you think it's red? Do you have any idea why it's called Red Square? Often, when I ask this question, tourists think it's because of the color red. And on the right side, you can see a beautiful historical museum. The red color. There are more buildings of red color on Red Square, such as the Kremlin or uh, Kazan Cathedral. We will see all of them today, but it's not because of the color. Another guess is maybe it's because of the communist history. You may know the Red Army, the communist flag uh, was the USSR flag was red, but no. And the last try can be, oh, because of the blood, the massacre, but no. The answer is way more beautiful and optimistic. Red meant beautiful in the ancient Russian language. So it's simply beautiful square. And I hope that today you will agree with me. You will agree with Russians who called it beautiful square. So oh, you can take a look at it. And you can see that Red Square is a very active place despite the pandemic, despite the coronavirus. As I've already mentioned, we have a lot of tourists coming from all over Russia and not only Russia, but there are also many Moscovites who come here to see its beauty. Every time we see San Basil's Cathedral or other buildings, that's very, very beautiful and uh, today we have uh, a preparation for one of the annual events on red square and there are these temporary stalls with russian souvenirs let's take a look at what can be russian souvenirs i believe that many of you know about russian dolls or nesting dolls and we call them matryoshka but one interesting souvenir i want to show you that is not that well known around the world. It's called Kakoshnik. It's a traditional peasant headdress. And it's important uh, for you to remember because in a few minutes, I will show you how this traditional headdress was uh, represented in the Russian architecture. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free uh, to ask. And we will start with uh, one of attractions on Red Square, Kazan Cathedral. How old do you think it is? One more time, let's try to guess 16th, 17th century, maybe 18th or 19th. No, again, it's about 25 years old. To be exact, 27 years old. Again, what you can see, it's a modern replica. The original church was built in the 17th century. At that time, it was an interesting moment in our history because we had one dynasty, Rurikovici, and it ended. There were many candidates. There were even candidates from Poland. And if not the big battle, the big victory, 
Russia actually could become a part of Poland in the 17th century. And thanks to two men, Minin and Prozharsky, who united Russia and protected from the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, we uh, got the new dynasty, Romanovs. To celebrate this victory, this church was built. It was very common at that time. That's how uh, the church looked originally, but in the 20th century, when Stalin was in power, again, the church was demolished in 1936. Why? Well, the official explanation to have more space for cars and tents and red square, the same as with the resurrection gates, to have more space. But I must tell you that at that time, there was no religion. Everybody was a communist. Everybody was an atheist. So before it was destroyed, it was closed. And believe it or not, there was a cafe. People even lived inside this church. And it's not a unique story. You can find many other churches where there were shops, uh, cinema theaters, or even KGB uh, departments. Everything you can imagine. So only after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1993, this church was rebuilt. And it's actually the first church that was rebuilt. Today it has a very beautiful, authentic atmosphere. And we will get closer uh, to take a look at some uh, beautiful architectural uh, elements. You can see uh, there is an icon, Kazan, the Virgin of Kazan. And the cathedral is named after this icon because it's believed that this icon helped uh, during the battle. Remember, we just took a look at Kokoshniki, the headdress, and at the cathedral, you can recognize Kokoshnik. It's called uh, Zakroma, but that's the reflection. And this is Russian architecture. When you think about Russian architecture, and even tourists who visited Moscow, they would say, well, that must be the Kremlin or St. Basil's Cathedral, but no, both of them are not actually a representation of Russian architecture. This church and the Russian architectural style was in the 17th century, traditional Russian architectural style. But now we will take a look at another building, which also shows you Russian architectural style, but to be exact, neo-Russian style, and that's the historical museum. One of actually my favorite buildings on Red Square. You can, you can hear there is the advertising of tours in Russian for Russians. So that shows you that there are many tourists from Russia, from different parts of Russia, and tour companies work really hard today, these days, to attract tourists. So looking at historical museum, you can see those elements uh, again, but they will be more structure, it's more organized architecturally. In the 19th century, we thought about going back to original Russian style, to the traditional Russian style, so that was represented in the historical museum. And I must tell you that through our history, there was an interesting question for us, for Russians. What is Russia? Is it Europe? Is it Asia? Or maybe it's something unique with its own culture. What do you think? Do you have an answer? Even when I was at school, we were discussing it. I remember we were talking about it. What is Russia? And interestingly, that in the 19th century, the nobility spoke French. If you read, or I believe you heard about War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, one of the greatest Russian books, starts with a conversation in French. So at that time, we were trying to be closer to the Western uh, countries. 
But nevertheless, the movement called Slavo Pils appeared. And for the first time, they said, Russia is not Europe, Russia is not Asia. It's a unique country with its own and unique culture, and we must preserve it. So the historical museum became the center of Russian culture, became the place to preserve Russian culture. And today it has a great collection, over 5 million items. Ironically, you can see less than 1% of it. That's how big it is. And the man behind, uh, behind it, the architect, was Vladimir Sherwood, who actually wasn't Russian, he was English. So it's very interesting that a very Russian place with very beautiful Russian interiors was built by an Englishman. But to be honest, he uh, was several generations in uh, Russia. And uh, what I like about Red Square is that we can show you different periods in our history. We can talk about buildings that represent different periods of our culture, of our architecture. And the number one in the 20th century was certainly the mausoleum. Lenin's mausoleum is the place where we have the embalmed body of the first Soviet leader, Vladimir Lenin. You can see this pyramid building. Indeed, it was inspired by Egyptian uh, pyramids. Lenin was more than just a leader, more than just a first leader. He was considered as the father of the revolution, moreover, the father of a new nation. So when he died, it was a big tragedy for Russian people. There were thousands and thousands of communists coming to Moscow to see his displayed body. But imagine the situation. You have thousands of people who want to see the exposed body of Lenin, but at the same time, the body was rotting. So even though it wasn't his wish to be buried this way, his wife, his brother were against it. They had nothing to do, but just to come up with an idea to embalm his body. And from 1924 till 1972, in less than 50 years, over 10 million people visited the mausoleum. It's really unbelievable uh, to see how many hours people had to wait in line. Well, today, uh, in the summertime, when we have a lot of tourists, it can be about two hours. The mausoleum is open free hours a day, five days a week. And that's the entrance to the mausoleum. Uh, this way you can see the Kremlin. That's the main residence today for Russian president. That's not the only residence. And there is a urban legend that once you see the flag, he's inside. When you don't see the flag, he's not inside. Believe it or not, but I come here almost every day, especially when I work as a tour guide, and there is always this flag. So it means he's either a very hard-working man, or it's just a nice story to tell. You can choose uh, your version. And we will move towards St. Basil's Cathedral, uh, one of the buildings that I believe that most of you have seen in tour guide books this beautiful, colorful church. And along the way, I will tell you about the Kremlin. The Kremlin was established a few years after Moscow was founded. Do you know how old is Moscow? Uh, Moscow was established in the 12th century, in 1147. This year, we will celebrate 873 years of Moscow. So. The original Kremlin was built in the 12th century, but it was wooden. And since it was the main residence for Russian Tsars, Russian Grand Princes, they were tired. It was always on fire. So the one that you can see was built in the 15th century. As I said, um, that's not 
a representation of Russian architecture because the Kremlin was built by Italians. And if you go to Milan or you go to Verona, you can find fortresses that will be very similar to the Kremlin. But we believe that the Kremlin is the most beautiful one. It's actually the largest of fortress in Europe. But you might be disappointed to learn that it's not the only Kremlin in Russia. It's also not the only Red Square in Russia. Why? Well, about Red Square, other cities have squares in the center and they believe they have also very beautiful squares. And as for the Kremlin, the Kremlin means uh, the fortification. So the same idea and if you travel around Russia, you will find, well, Kremlins. But of course, the one is uh, that we have here in Moscow. Red Square is the place uh, which is not only for tourists, well, thousands of tourists come every year, but we also have many big events. Uh, you can see, even in English, uh, we are expecting uh, Spaske Tower Military Tattoo Festival, International Military Tattoo Festival. So international military bands come from all over the world and it's absolutely fascinating. But at the same time, you can see that Red Square is partially closed. Yes, sometimes you can come to Moscow and of course you want to see Red Square, who doesn't? But it can be closed completely. Uh, like it happens during parades and you need to know some secret places to get to Red Square. And one of them is on the left. It's Bosco Cafe. Stunning view, amazing, wonderful view. Can you imagine you come to Moscow and see this uh, great cafe? Another stunning view you can get in the winter time. Uh, we have a huge ice rink right here in the winter. Good news is that in the morning it's free. Uh, so often we are asked when it's a better time to come to Moscow, winter or summer. Well, summer is great. I mean, you can see the weather is uh, amazing, it's wonderful. But in the winter time, you have some great activities uh, like figure skating, figure skating uh, shows. We are considered, um, we believe that we have the best figure skaters in the world. And uh, one of the most uh, beautiful views you can get here on Red Square. We also have uh, shows, uh, not only Spaske Tower, but also music uh, shows. And one time we had Paul McCartney performance. It's interesting that the Beatles in the Soviet era were considered as alien ideology, ed propaganda of alien ideology, but uh, now everybody loves the Beatles and it was a huge uh, concert. So on the right side, there is one of the main uh, Kremlin towers, uh, Spaske or the Savior Tower. And the festival that I mentioned is named after this uh, tower. It's also the tower that everybody knows about in Russia because when we celebrate New Year, we see the clock on Spaske Tower. So every Russian person, even if he or she has never been to Moscow, knows about Red Square. You can see the preparations for the festival. I have a question. Yeah. Is Red Square normally fenced off these days? Repeat the question. Is Red Square normally fenced off these days? A very good question, yes. Uh, as I mentioned, it's fenced off uh, during the festivals. Uh, so right now we have a festival, Spaske Tower, but when there is nothing, now you can easily uh, have a beautiful view. We all recently actually had another festival, a book festival or book fair. 
And then uh, you can see there is one festival after another and two weeks after the festival, it also uh, takes time to take everything off. So we are approaching St. Basil's Cathedral and this is certainly one of the most beautiful cathedrals in the world. Uh, it was built 40, uh, 450 years ago. And at that time, they worked really hard. You can see what we eat. We eat corn. It's like a popular snack in Russia. And you can try Russian kvass. It's a Russian lemonade based, uh, made of rye bread. I certainly recommend you to uh, try Russian kvass. So St. Basil's Cathedral, isn't it beautiful with these colorful domes? It was built in the 16th century. At that time, Ivan the Terrible was in power. And you may guess that he wasn't called the Terrible without any reason. Supposedly, he killed his own son. And I will tell you an interesting legend that can also show you the personality of Ivan the Terrible. When he saw the cathedral, he was really impressed. And he asked the architects, Barma and Posnik, are you able to build anything beautiful like that again? And they said, well, of course, for you, everything you want. And then he ordered to blind them. I know that's not the only place in other cities like Prague. You have stories about architects that were blinded. But we uh, say that that could be also an explanation why we don't have any other beautiful churches like St. Basil's Cathedral. Well, there is one in St. Petersburg, the church and the spilled blood, but it was built only in the 19th century. The question is, why wouldn't we have it as an architectural style? Why wouldn't we have them all around Moscow or Russia? Because if you think about architectural style, well, it's very unique. And it took over, it took 125 years to make it look this way. So the, the legend might be true. But again, it's up to you to decide if you want to believe, uh, believe in it or not. Today it's uh, the, mu the museum. Uh, and it's a part of the historical museum that we saw in the beginning. And now uh, we are going uh, to the last beautiful building, uh, GUM department store. It's written like J-U-M and sometimes I can hear tourists saying GUM. Now it's GUM and it means uh, main, the main universal store. It used to be state universal store. Uh, we will see that it's more than just a mall with very <laughs> gorgeous boutiques, but it's also architecturally a stunning building uh, that also represents neo-Russian style or the 19th century. It was built in 1893 and at that time, there was a contest to build the uh, building and Alexander Pomerantsev won it. So it became actually a big innovation at that time. Uh, you may wonder uh, why people don't wear masks. Uh, so it's not mandatory to wear a mask. Uh, maybe you have seen some of the people having masks and generally, uh, you need to have a mask when you go uh, inside. So I must have one with me. But uh, we are going to show you more than just the more. We will also talk about uh, Russian food, actually what we like to eat. So, so we got a comment. Yes. St. Petersburg one is beautiful as well, but it's, it is more beautiful inside vessels. Mm, yeah, we've asked to wear a mask. 
Well, the beauty of uh, St. Basil's Cathedral is uh, certainly uh, that it's an ancient church with uh, beautiful Russian ornaments. And inside, you have small churches, so you go from one to another. There is also an exposition of Russian icons. So here you can see uh, there is Chanel, Burberry, um, and there is nobody inside. And it's not because of the pandemic or the coronavirus. You may know that we have the highest number of billionaires in the world, 83 in Moscow. So they got the savings. Uh, but there is, there is often uh, nobody inside. And there is a joke about room that more people work in here than actually people who shop in here. But there is one thing that everybody likes to buy, and it's ice cream. This ice cream, why it's so special? Let's believe that it's the same recipe as it was in the Soviet Union. And many people say that it's the only thing that still tastes like the Soviet Union. So if you come to Moscow, you must try this legendary ice cream. And the flavor I recommend you is uh, creme brulee, which is like salty caramel. You can see here bikes, uh, which is a part of a shop. But often when you uh, walk around Goom, you can see some exhibitions, uh, like they have car exhibitions, Ford exhibitions, Soviet fashion. And it's amazing that uh, they're all free. And if you come here, you can, uh, there is always something to see. But you can imagine that the place was completely different in the Soviet times. We didn't have international brands. We didn't have international goods. Moreover, it was closed and turned into storages and some uh, departments like the Ministry of Provision. And only after the death of Stalin, it was reopened. So the time when there was nothing and people didn't have much even to buy, sometimes they would come here as if it was a museum. And there were secret sections for the elite who could come anytime they wanted and buy whatever they wanted. And one of them was right here. Today on this place, and there is this beautiful uh, supermarket, which is inspired by the Soviet uh, times by the 50s. And we will show you some things to try in Moscow, like this chocolate. Uh, Russia is not famous for its chocolate, but we believe that it's really amazing, uh, delicious, and this is something to try. One more time, this ice cream is everywhere. Honey, you uh, may think that vodka is the traditional Russian drink, but we will see vodka, we will talk about vodka. But uh, actually before vodka, there was honey beer called mead in English or medavucha in Russian. Uh, so if you come here and you're interested in Russian uh, drinking culture, well, uh, you can not only try vodka, but uh, this uh, meat uh, could be a good uh, thing for you. Uh, and we are approaching uh, the vodka section. So often uh, we asked what could be a good vodka to try or to, uh, to bring home as a souvenir. And we would say with my colleague that Beluga is certainly one of the best. Uh, there are some interesting examples like Kalashnikov vodka. Uh, before everybody was taking a photo with uh, this Kalashnikov vodka, but now, no can't do that, but you can buy it, uh, $200. So we are moving uh, towards the end, and uh, we are happy that you spent your afternoon or evening or morning with us. Uh, right now, it's a good time for you to ask questions, and we will be happy to answer uh, whether it's about Red Square, Moscow, or Russia. A few people have been in Moscow and they recalled uh, yummy ice cream. 
Or say yes. It's, it's really good. By the way, we were both born in the USSR. So we a little bit know about how, uh, a little bit know a little bit about this sort of thing. So if there are no questions uh, before the end, I will show you another uh, thing to try in Russia, which is uh, caviar. We are famous for red and black caviar. And black caviar is not cheap. Uh, well, the, the smallest can can be about 50 years. And red, uh, it's generally sturgeon and beluga. You can read uh, the comments if. So if you don't have any questions, uh, thank you again for joining the tour. Uh, if you like this experience and you want to show your appreciation, uh, please go to uh, www.travelcurious/forward. Stay curious and make uh, and give us a tip. And this will be a discount for you on your next tour with uh, Travel Curious. Uh, have a great day and we will be happy to see you in Moscow. Are there any comments? Amazing, com thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We love spread your food and the read of other comments. What's your favorite Russian dish, for example? My favorite Russian dish, uh, I love soups. I know that borscht is uh, traditionally Ukrainian soup. In Russia, everybody believes it's Russian. So borscht is one of my favorite things to eat. I like Russian pies, uh, amazing. Uh, and I like pies with absolutely everything. But soups is the number one thing, especially because it's cold uh, in Moscow in the winter time. So it, they help me to uh, keep warm. Bye bye.